Hello everyone, this is Vicki Ashard with Nature's Best. Today we are going to paint decorative corn, or I call it Indian corn. And uh, I want to show you what we're going to paint right here. There it is. And actually this was from last year, I bought it last year, and I wanted to paint it last fall and I never got a chance to, and today we're going to do it. So, I already drew my drawing here, and um, I, just to save some time, but I wanted to show you this part of it, is that I put the Lowell, my Lowell Cornell transfer paper uh, on here, and, we're gonna, and you'll see how I actually drew it. My Strathmore watercolor card is underneath it, and I have it taped down. See my tape around there, about a quarter of an inch, it'll be a nice border, and my drawing is here. I, you can get this at, I believe I uh, got it at uh, Dick Blick's uh, online. Alright, now let's uh, transfer my drawing, and you always want to have the dark side down. I already tested it, you, you probably want to do that with your, with your pencil. I just use a number two to draw it, and I got the right side. You can actually tell. See, there's the dark side. So you want the dark side down. Okay, so let's go ahead and transfer the drawing. Okay, so here's my husk right here. Use the wrong thing. Getting ahead of myself. This is a number two pencil. And what I did is I brought it down a little bit. You can see my paper right here, because I think I, I drew it uh, too far up. So you can do that. You can move your paper after you drew it. It's no big thing. I'm so glad I got to do this today. I've been wanting to do it. It's these. This has been on my shelf since last fall. Do you believe it? Oh, so much going on all the time. And it is fall. I don't think I, you know, they have them out in the stores yet. I haven't seen them. These beautiful Indian corn, but it's going to be October 1st tomorrow. And I think they'll be coming out with them. So when you get yours, you can make a nice painting. And you want to have some of these tusks coming down here, these husks rather, coming down here. And these here we'll put in with our black pen. I'm using a, when I uh, go to actually, after we transfer this onto our paper, I'm going to be using a Sharpie pen. It's a waterproof pen. So I was going to be doing a little bit of pen and, and, and watercolor today. Oh, I hope you're having a good day. I had a really good morning. I, uh, Always work out in the morning. I try to, Monday through Friday, and uh, really enjoy that. It just uh, really starts my day off well. I go actually to a fitness center, so. All right, now we want to draw this part here. What we're doing is we're transferring that on our watercolor paper. And the watercolor papers are the Strathmore. You can Buy them online if you want them. Packs of 50 or 100. And uh, I always make sure that, see this arrow here? I always make sure I put that because I know that's the top of my card because my, what my husband does on the back, he puts my name on the back. And of course I don't, I, I want my paper to be, be on the right side. Okay, now let's draw these little like round circle things that you see on your corns, you know. And you don't have to be fussy. They just they're just little round things. So we're gonna go in there with that pen anyway. And you're probably wondering what the back of this is. We'll get to that in a minute. I uh, thought that it would look nice to to uh, look like it's hanging on, like maybe a uh, old uh, piece of, you know, a, a door or something, you know, the wood part of the door, barn door maybe or something. So we're going to draw that in, and uh, paint that too. So should be fun. Now 
this is my second video. I hope uh, you were able to look at my first video I made. It was um, what I've been doing is well in September I get ready for start to get ready for Christmas and uh, I started making uh, bags because I, I, I am going to start to wrap my gifts and I saw that I didn't have a lot of gift bags so I took some paper that I had in my craft room for oh years and years I'm, I'm trying to do some projects that I've haven't been able to get to you know it's, it's you know when you have four kids it's a little hard to be in the craft room sometimes so I've I've, I've accumulated these uh, papers and and I made some really nice gift bags I hope you can watch that I'll put a, a link or something to that maybe you can can watch watch my first video you know when you, when you're when you're crafting you always learn things uh, even if if you think you know how to do something and the more you do it the the better you get at it so i was making more of those gift bags uh, over the weekend and i discovered that if i just crease the top part of that bag down and then later uh, fold it it's much better than like if you've like when I first showed it like when you, uh, I first showed it by creasing it you know when I was when I was doing it instead of creasing it at the beginning of my project so you can make as many as you want of these and I'm almost done here just getting to this making sure that I have this in there. Oh, we had a wonderful time at the cider mill. Did you like to do that in October, September? Uh, my grandchildren turned two and we had, uh, my daughter had uh, their birthday there. So uh, we had a great time. A lot of people, I didn't eat the donuts because well, that's just something I don't do anymore, but uh, and that's something I'll talk about one day, but um, they had a great time going to get the apples. And the... Okay, so we're done with that part. Now, what I did with this part is I used a ruler. I'm going to do that again because it uh, makes it look nice. It looks like a Door. We don't want to make it look too nice because we want to look make it look, um, uh, you know, like a a door that's been around for a while. And when we get to painting that, we'll we'll make it look rustic looking. And those little squiggly things that go like are in the wood. I don't know what you call them, but we've got to put a couple of those in there too. Okay, and let's pick up. Our drawing now and see. Oh, perfect. There you go. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take that off. I'm going to take my drawing card off and see how I hold it with masking tape, is all. And then this little part, I will continue that when I paint. Okay, now we're going to be using our Sharpie. Uh, you can use, this is a permanent marker, anything that res will resist the water like those micro pens and we're going to fill our corn husk in here and this part here what i want to do is create some lines in the corn husk is what my goal is and you can actually use brown i did not have a brown let's see how we're going to extend this line here to get to the end our picture there that's what we want because you're gonna have we're gonna have a lot of burnt sienna yellows oranges well not particularly oranges but like maroonishes and I'm not gonna show you all of this I'm just gonna do a little bit so you don't need to have a whole video on 
drawing these lines. And the reason uh, we're going to do this too is we're going to fill in those little corns so they don't get lost in our painting. Okay, I filled in all the corn and uh, used my Sharpie, the permanent marker. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to work on the background. I like to work on my background first. I'm going to pick up some water on a number eight brush, Creative Mark. I like to use Creative Mark. Get my gray, which is ultramarine blue, and we're using uh, today we're using burnt sienna. Sometimes I use the burnt umber with the ultramarine blue, but we're going to be using the burnt sienna. You don't have to worry about backgrounds. I know that probably it's a little scary, but you know the uh, paint only goes where the water is, okay? So we want to add water to our background here. Because this is going to be looking like a rustic door. This is what I want it to look like. You don't have to do this if you don't want your painting to have this look. You don't have to do a background if you don't want. I just thought it would be interesting. It would look like, you know, the decorative corn is hanging on a door. This is Strathmore 140 pound paper that I'm using. Really love arches. Arches is more expensive. For my watercolor cards, I like to use the Strathmore. But for my big paintings, I will use arches all the time. And that's also 140 pound paper. Okay. I already have my lines in for my doors, my door parts here that I thought would look nice. You know, the wood will make knobby things, knobby things in our on our door. So that's something interesting to make the door look more rustic. I want to go everywhere but the corn. Okay, I'm gonna be painting that a different color. And this part probably dried up a little bit by now because that was the beginning so we're just going to go over a little bit more. Looks pretty good. What we don't want to do is paint it evenly. Okay. So when you paint it's going to be darker here and there. And anywhere you get too much water, too much paint, you can blot that away also. When he gets on your hus, you can, doesn't even have to be fussy. The husks are going to be painted in a minute. If it gets a little bit on there, that's fine. Because you know these husks that I, when I bought this corn, had a little bit of darkness to it as it is. So this is why I like to put my watercolor card, tape it to this, um, foam board. It's called a foam board. If you don't have foam board, you can use... I'm turning this so you can see this because I, I don't want to be in your way here. I want my hand to be in your way. See, and that's that's what's nice about putting your card on your foam board. You can move your painting all around and uh, that's real nice. I think you'll enjoy that. Or, you know, you, you can use cardboard if you don't have foam board. You can tape it to cardboard. So it's just going to be on there for, the, you know, until you do the picture. Okay. Now I made these little kernels uh, quite little. I think if I did it again, I'd make them a little bigger, but it's okay. All right. Now, you can make your door, if you want to, you can make it brown. But I thought because I had the black pen that the gray would be a little, you know, a little bit better, uh, harmonize a little bit better with, with the painting if 
if we're going to have like a, a gray door rather than a brown door. But if I had a brown pin to do those corns, I, I, I might make the background, uh, I might use that burnt sienna. Now see my paint is drying, I mean my, my paper is drying out a little bit, so I might want to go back, put a little bit more water in here. You don't want too much, but you do want it wet a little bit, okay? And uh, one day, or maybe this paint, this by the end of the video, you, I'll show you what I use to put my water in. I just, it's just been absolutely wonderful. I started painting, oh, 2015. It was August 2015 when I started, and. Um, I've been using these two containers ever since, and it, it they've just worked out so well. Well, here, I'll show you now. See, here they are. They're actually those sandwich uh, containers that you get, uh, can you see that? That you get lunch meat in, I guess. I, I mean, I just picked it up in my kitchen. I thought, well, this, I'll try that. And uh, I really like it. Now here I'm getting a, I want that. Sometimes I pick up my painting like that when I want my paint to run. I don't want it to stay in one place and get a bloom. Bloom is when you have too much water in one spot. And um, then it forms like a bloom. Okay. Just keep working at it. We're almost done here with this. This is our first layer of the door and uh, almost done and this is remember we uh, said it was I said it was um, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna together makes grayish see there and uh, the more water you have in 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 your paint, the the grayer it'll be, you know. So there, and we don't want it. We like I said, this is gonna be rustic looking. We don't want it to look perfect, okay? We want it. Okay, I think I like that a lot. All right, so I'm gonna stop the video and dry it, and we'll come back and put another layer on, which is called glazing, okay? And do some more things to it. Oh, before I do that, though, where's my credit card? Okay, uh, I want to actually put some lines in here with the credit card. Make it look even more rustic. All right, and you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna do this now. These are these knobby things um, that are on the painting that are, that are on, on our door. Okay, so you go around like this. All right, make like a little mark there. And I think I'm gonna make a few more marks. And then when we go back to painting it, it'll show up because it's wet. If you make your knobby things now, it's, it, It'll get those lines in in our next layer, and I think what I'm going to do is not stop the video and get those rustic lines in. Okay, my other knobby part was like right here. I put one. I'm looking at my drawing. Okay. Um, okay, and I have one down here. So I kind of lost them, you know. And so I look at my drawing to see where they are. Okay, all right, let's, let's do this again now with our water. Let's put in another layer here to pick up those. And you'll see that it'll, let's start here on the top. Okay, all right. There they are, see how good they appear? It's the same way that I work when I make my leaves. Okay. 
and it's looking really good now. I'm going to put a little darker color in here and there. Like I say, we don't want it perfect, okay? So that's what I'm going to do around the whole background. Okay, now we're going to paint our husk. We're going to use a little yellow ochre. I'm just going to paint some in here, here and there. I'm going to try this mauve, burnt sienna. Sometimes when I, before I paint, I pick up a piece of paper, see if I like that. Yeah, I do. I'm going to add that mauve and burnt sienna, a little ultramarine in there, uh, for our shadows of the husks. They have a little bit of a shadow to them. Kind of blend that in with the yellow ochre. Not too, too, too dark, but a little bit here and there. A little bit more yellow ochre in this top one here. And if you get too much in one area, just blot it with your Kleenex. Okay, I'm liking that. All right, let's drop a little color in our corn, okay? All right. I'm going to start with this middle one because I'm going to let these two husks dry. I don't want to blend in my corn right now. But this one here in the middle one. So that is this color here. Lighter maroon. So I'm going to go in with that. I'm going to test it on my paper first. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to cover quite a bit of that area at first, okay? Yeah, it just makes it easier later. Okay. I'm going to add a little bit more blue to that and see what that does. Okay, it makes it a little darker. Okay. All right, good. We'll just leave that one like that dry a little bit. Now these two, you can tell if they're dry by the back of your hand. They're dry a little. I don't think it would bleed in. Okay, I don't think we have to worry about that. I'm going to put my Hanson Yellow Deep in there. I use my spray bottle sometimes. Comes in really handy to get those colors moving with the water. Okay. All right. So let's add this here. Ooh, that's really bright there, isn't it? Let's tone that down just a little bit. Add some more water. Okay. All right. Then now. Our one to the right has both yellow and the maroon color in it. Okay. So we're going to do some with the maroon and some with the yellow, just for starters. And we're going to get put our details in a little bit. This is just to get us started, okay? I want to get this middle one with some of these dark ones. Dark maroon. Okay. So we don't want it to be purple. We want it to be maroon. And right now I'm painting what I think. I'm not looking at my but I'm wanting to in my mind what I saw I can look up at my corn if I want here and now and then just if I have a question about what color I should put in or okay they're not all dark and it's a little a little bit too much water I can always put another glaze in 
Okay, just picking up a little bit of that water. It's quite a bit of water there. And we don't have to worry about this much because we're going to be, we're still not done with our door part yet. That's, that needs to, you know, be worked on a little bit. And uh, so we're going to be able to do that when, when we're done with, with, the, with the painting. We're going to go back to our door. Now some of this corn right here has these maroon color to it also. So we're going to add that. It also has a little blue in it, of which we will add. See how I have a bead of water there? I don't want that on there. Because if it, that drops, then you have to contend with excess water. Okay, here's my palette. And the um, colors you want to use are Amgram Yellow Ochre, Hansa Yellow Deep, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, Prussian Blue, Burnt Sienna, and I used Windsor Newton Cotman Mauve. Now you, if you don't have Amgram, uh, you can use any paints, student or professional watercolor you prefer. Okay, the corn is painted, and that was so much fun. I continued to paint it with my number eight round. Uh, so we've used that the entire painting. And um, just to show you the corn husk here and the corn, um, this is uh, the one on the left. And if you notice, there's some blue ones. It's amazing when you do paint, you notice colors that you haven't really noticed before. I never actually noticed there were blue little corn cob things in, in the corn there, but they were. So that's that one. And then the middle one is this one here. And it kept getting purple on me. So when you mix your Prussian blue and your um, permanent Elizabeth crimson, uh, Make sure you you add more red continually, um, more red because you really want it like this, and the darker one you want like that. So um, you just add more water to this one, on the lighter part, see. But it's okay. It turned out fine because we have a little of that mauve and uh, burnt sienna in here, which is it's very harmonious with that. Okay, and then our third corn. I'll grab that is this one here and I'm it had all sorts of colors in it actually oh that's my computer talking to me anyway um, I was really glad that I actually uh, lined up my my husk and corn this way because uh, I, I thought that it really was nice that the two yellows were the ones that had yellow in them were in the ends okay so what I want to do now is I want to um, work on the background a little bit more, okay? So we're going to go back with our Burnt Sienna and Ultramarine Blue and get that gray to test it and you go like that. Okay, that's, that's a good gray, all right? Just going to add some more in here, here and there, just to give it that rustic look. Yeah, this time I'm gonna kind of go in by that corn there. I'm gonna make it look like it's on the door. I want to have a little darker down here because that's kind of like a shadow part. Okay, right along here. And along the side here. Keep picking up that color and working around. Okay. 
and I'm not going to worry about getting it on the husk because I'm going to actually add a little bit of this to the husk too so that it gives it a little shadow, okay? It's pretty dark down here. Shadow. Okay. All right. All right, let's add a little bit to the husk. Give it a little bit of a, more of a shadow here. Make it a little darker. Make our darkers darker so that there's contrast, okay? Good painting has contrast. See how light this is here? So we want to make it a little dark here. Then it kind of pops, okay? You see that? Okay, and I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. Like I said, I had so much fun painting the corn. That was that was a lot of fun, okay? This area, I brought in more lines here. If you remember, I cut it short when I first put it in, but then I added more lines in it, and it looks like it belongs, see? Okay, I like that now. I think I'm going to add one little thing here. Let's see. I'm going to use a number four round. Let's see if I can add my ultramarine blue. Get some more ultramarine blue here. My burnt sienna. some more gray. I need some more gray. You just keep adding both those colors to get your gray. Maybe I want it even a little darker than gray. I think I want it a little bit on this black side. Yeah, let's see. So I think the way I made these little knobby things, I think generally you see things like little lines going from them. Not too much, but just a little bit. I think that's pretty good. Alright, I think I like that. I think I'm going to call that done. I am going to dry this and then sign my name. Well, thank you for joining me today. I hope you had fun looking at how to paint decorative corn. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Happy creating.